This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or an online store, make it with Squarespace. I think I've got almost everything ready to get on with this project and I've been putting it off for a while so I'm a bit eager to make a start and rather than kind of waffle on what I thought I'd do is kind of walk and talk as I go. What I've got here is a nine foot two piece spinning rod blank. This casts 15 to 45 gram layers or about half an ounce to one and a half ounce which covers a fair whack of the layers I make and use for pike fishing. But the first thing I need to do with these blanks to actually turn them into fishing rods is find the spines in both pieces. I've got a little ceramic tile here and this is really just to give me a smooth surface to actually roll the rod on. So I'm going to start with the tip section and put the, the fat end down on my tile. Put my right hand up about probably about two thirds of the way up the rod and this is in the centre to give me a bend. And as I press into that bend it's probably going to roll to its spine. I mean it's almost instantly there. If I try and roll that again, it'll just roll to a point where it locks up. Um, and that's the spine, it's as simple as that. I can try and move it again, press and roll, and it kind of sticks in that one position. I'm going to mark this, I've got a little China Graph pen. The reason I use this to mark the blank is because it can just be wiped off later. So if I do that again, there we go. And I'm just going to line that up, mark the top. These blanks are built out of flat pieces of carbon fiber that are wrapped round steel tapering mandrills and then baked. And in that wrapping process, there's a bit of an overlap which creates that spine. The theory is, is to use that by aligning it with the guides that I'm gonna put on. So when I'm loading the rod up or fighting a fish that the rod's gonna naturally wanna bend in the place where I point it rather than me fighting with the rod as well as the fish. I'm gonna do the second part or the top part of the rod which is exactly the same, maybe a little stiffer. So I've got the spines marked out and I suppose the first question is which side of the blank do I actually fit the guides to? Because I'm building a spinning rod, generally those would be fitted following that line on the inside of the curve. For a casting rod, something that uses a bait caster, that would probably go the other way round. But like a lot of things in rod building, it's not actually set in stone and people have wildly different ideas about where to fit guides and how they should be fitted. And you're welcome to add your own little two pennant in the comments section down below. To start out fitting those guides, I'm going to start by fitting the tip ring to the tip section. So I've gone ahead and made some thin strips of hot melt glue on my tile and then when it cooled, peeled them off and slipped it inside the sleeve of the guide and then just trimmed it with a pair of scissors. I've got here a pair of pliers and if I just get my guide and drop my glue back inside that sleeve, I can use my lighter just to heat it gently till it starts to melt. If I give that a bit of a roll round to get the glue moving, I can just basically pop that on the end of the rod. And then I've got a few seconds to really just line it up with my line. Just finishing putting the final mark on the tip section just to lay out for where the guides are going to go. I've got a recipe here that I got from work and most rod suppliers will supply you with that when you actually buy a blank. I've got one final thing to do before I can get this in the wrapping machine and start putting the guides on and that's grind the feet down on these guides. They tend to be a little bit blunt 
and that can make it difficult for the thread to wrap up them. So I'm going to take them over to the bench grinder behind me and put a slower angle on there and also a finer point to the tip. I think that second one's just slightly out there. I'll just adjust that before I start. Yeah, that's kind of there or thereabouts. So this is my rod wrapper, which I built in a previous video, and it's based around this cordless drill driver, which is connected to a foot pedal via a little bike cable. And if I turn that, basically what it does is it spins the rod blank so I don't have to do it with my hands. Uh, what I've got in here is just some masking tape on this spindle. If I shove it on, it grips the inside of the blank and makes the whole thing turn. It's a friction fit, and if I want to, I can still turn it by hand. It's a little stiff, but it does the job if I need to. I'm going to jump directly into whipping rather than faff about anymore. I've got my thread here in a plastic bag just really to keep it clean, and I'm going to drop that into the drawer of the workbench. The first bit of whipping I'm going to do is on this end here, which is really to support that sleeve as it goes over the bottom part of the rod. I'm going to use my roll of masking tape as a guide just to give me an inch measure up the blank and put a piece of tape on there. Then I've got another little tape here. I'm going to put that on just really at the end of the rod. I can then take my line and I'm just going to bring it in under that first piece of tape at an angle and kind of just press it down there. If I bring that back across, it should make a little kind of triangle to tape that, press that down again. And really I can start whipping. There isn't really any right or wrong way to do whipping as long as it holds together and does its job. And this is a bit of an unusual method, but it's a very easy method to pick up and that's why I like it. If I get my finger down there and hold the thread, I'm just pinching it between my fingers to add tension. And I just give it a slow wind once over that and make sure it comes back at the right place just ahead of that line and then I can just power through probably about 10 turns on there I'm going to put another little piece of tape down here just to hold that tension and if I just take my second piece of tape off and I'm going to pull this line my tag end up at an angle about 45 degrees if I take my first piece of tape off I can see there that it's come it's come up to the edge and it all looks pretty neat I'm going to use my blade here and just press on top of the tag end to sever it cleanly then it's just a case of picking up my line again and carrying on So I've just stopped there probably about seven or eight wraps before the end. I've got a little loop here. I'm just going to slip that in underneath and bring it up to the top. Then I can carry on again to where I want to finish, which is just short of that end. If I just take that down quickly, I can press my finger on the end of the line there just to hold the tension snip it free, thread the end through that little loop. I'm going to get my bit of a loop, the end of my loop, and just pull that up tight against the whippings to hold that tension. And then because I want to bury this tag end actually in the thread so it doesn't stick out, I'm going to cut it probably two or three mil from my whippings. And then again, pull that 
loop down at a 45 degree angle. That looks pretty clean, but I've got a little bit of plastic here off a chopping board and I'm just gonna neaten up the edges by just pressing them basically. But I'm just gonna flatten the threads a touch I've got a cigarette light here and I'm just going to give that a quick spark over just in case there's any bits of fluff I can't see. Burn them. And then a bit of masking tape and just use the tack to pull anything off. I'm going to do exactly the same but maybe just a smaller section over this joint and this here is actual reinforcement. I think this is 2k carbon fiber but I just want to hide that kind of changeover between the two materials. I'm in the process of building my own website at the moment for the handmade fisherman and of course I'm using Squarespace who kindly sponsored this video. Squarespace is really easy to use and it's almost self-explanatory. Squarespace offer a huge range of well-designed templates that you can bring things like your own images and video into. It's also all singing and dancing so there's no installing things or patching things in or even updating it's all done for you. It's easy to search for and register your own domains for your site and also transfer them if you've already got a domain. There is support available 24-7 if you need to get yourself out of a jam. So if you need a website, head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash handmade fisherman to save 10% on your first purchase. I'll post a link in the video description below. So for the guy foot, I'm gonna use a variation on the same technique to whip it. I've got my plastic piece of chopping board here and I'm gonna use that to measure up from the foot, lay my tape down and then just wrap it round to the back. Put my second piece of tape down there, the other side of the foot. Then I can bring my thread up and just do the same. Bring it over, make a little triangle and then stick down. Make sure I come the right side of it and carry on. Got about eight wraps on there, tape it down. I'm gonna pull my line out and get rid of that triangle, just pull it up. Take my bits of tape off. I've got my bit of plastic here again. I'm just gonna push the threads up before snipping that off. Back with a knife blade and just sever that and just carry on I'm just going to stop at the top of that foot there then I can take my original bit of tape off it's holding the foot on to carry on so I'm stopping on the back tape that down Again, I'm a few wraps from the end. I find my loop. I'm just gonna slip that in again. Carry on to the end. Just turn that back a touch. So finger on, snip my line free, thread it through. Bit of fat finger trouble. Pull my loop up. And I can snip that bit of line there. Again, two, three mil, so I can bury it. Just pull that down at an angle, and it's done. Just give it a bit of a neat knot. Put 
quick blast with the lighter. Bit of sticky tape just to pad anything off. That looks pretty neat. I'm gonna carry on and do the rest of the eyes. So that's the tip section done apart from the epoxy which I can't really do down here because it's just a bit too dirty and that's also where I'm going to leave this video in the next video I'm going to be dealing with that epoxy and also building the butt section adding the winch and the handles and maybe some more slightly more decorative whippings you should find a full list of the materials I've used for this part of the build in the description below. But with the next video, I'll publish the full pattern for the rod, including the specs for the eyes, the real seats, uh, and all the information really you'd need if you wanted to build one. But for the end bit of this video, I thought I'd do something a bit different and promote somebody else on YouTube who's been making videos probably about the same amount of time as me, um, Nothing But Fishing, which is a channel I watch regularly and have done for years to be honest it really started out as a guy basically with a camera taking you on his fishing trips but when he started he was kind of a spotty teenager and over time i think what's fascinating for me is to see how he's developed into really just an amazing watchable filmmaker and he's not been given you know he's not it's not been handed to him on a plate he's had to get his backside out there and make these videos and learn to edit to film you know to be his own sound man and he's done that phenomenally well to a to a level that's kind of way beyond most of us to be honest um so i'm gonna post a link to his last video and what i'd say to you is go and check him out subscribe to him and really go and share the shit out of his work nothing but fishing i'll post a link below um, for anybody else who's after a handmade fisherman t-shirt people have been asking me about these over the last few months my wife went out recently and found a new printer so i've put some in the etsy shop which you'll find a link to below that's the last bit of a plug for me thanks for watching i'll be back soon with this second part of the video see you soon